fit in your cooker hood. We're doing all right. Thanks for the help. Hi, welcome to Renovate Innovate. Today we're going to be showing you how to fit a cooker hood. We've been asked to come in and do this. Because uh, the person's not quite confident enough, I think. Is that right? To drill through this hole without making a mess. We've got our cooker hood here. We've got a space where it's going to go. But first thing we're going to have to do is find the centre of this opening. Plumb that line up there. Find the height that we want this to be sat at. In this case, there's going to be a granite top on here, so we have to account for that. Um, the reason why we're doing this now is so that the granite fitters can come in and template their granite perfectly up to the bottom of the cooker hood and also we want to get the hole drilled now so not making a mess after the granite's in. Um, the electricity supply there, this is just a temporary light switch on just to make safe that the electricians come in and done after the plasterers. Uh, we're not going to be connecting it electrically today, that will be done after, but we'll do everything else up to that point. Uh, yeah, let's crack on. Got me laser there. These are becoming more and more just the standard. You know, they're pretty cheap things. The green light gives the great lights more visible than the red light. It's a nice thick beam. And it's just easier, more reliable than the uh, spirit level. Although the spirit level's not a dead tool yet. But even, even the guys that set out this kitchen have said that they've set the datum out with the laser level and when they've come to put the spirit level on, there are deviations. So when you are measuring out, just use the one, one tool the whole time you're doing it. That's, that's what I'd recommend. Um, so yeah, saying that, I need my level. <laughs> Straight edge. Yeah, could have brought my level. That would have been a good idea. Yep, so I'm just marking up, that's the, the datum line we've got at the top of these units. There's going to be, I think, a little bit of 3 mil ply underneath and then 20 mil granite. And then we're going to give a 750 to 800 mil um, splash back in there. So we'll just measure up from that. I'm going to go uh, 750, I'm going to do plus 30, so 780 from there. And that's where we want the bottom of our cooker hood. To be. Depends on whether you've got electric or a gas hob as well. With a gas hob you need to have slightly more height. I think that's right. Um, yeah, there'll be a maximum height. It'll be in the instructions of every hood, hood you get. They'll tell you the height that you have to have. Also, you don't want it too low that you bash your head in it, depending on how tall you are as well when you lean forward. Um, you know, all those things to be taken into consideration when you're buying it. But yeah, you've got a 900 wide range going in here, and you want a 900 wide or more extractor and I also always recommend that you get it onto an out external wall here it's really simple you can just drill straight through this and outside but sometimes you'll see the ducting of them taken up in between joists and I don't know where but this is a real simple straightforward one um, in this case there was a window here that's just been boarded over it's just plasterboard behind here so drilling through this side of it really easy and then we'll hit the external brick wall there's probably a bit of insulation in between there so, yeah we'll get the bracket put on and then we'll start drilling and we've got the height that we need. Right, just going to measure this. So that's coming up there at 350 approximately. Again there's 350, so the top of our hood will be there and then we're going to have this six inch pipe coming off the top and bending out that way of course. So I'm guessing our hole's going to have to be somewhere up there. Just seeing where that comfortably bends and where it's going to hit the wall. We're going to have 300 mil wall in this case. There's 100 mil bricks in the cavity and 100 mil blocks on the inside. So from the bottom. 
the top. That's 550, let's call it 600. Yeah. That's the bottom of that pipe. So that's 160, half of that, 80. So now I'm just going to go up from that point now, a lot of measuring to do. I'm going to go up half the thickness of our pipe. In this case, if that's 160 mil, so we're going 80 mil. That's where we'll be drilling. Uh, drill. Just so don't forget. So there'll be a nice big six inch, six inch hole there. Nice little bend on that. So it's not going to kink too much. And then a cook over there at a nice height to the bottom of the extractor. Let's get the big drill. A little overkill. <laughs> a little bit about drilling this hole. The way to do it is to drill a pilot hole and then set up your core drill with a guide inside it and start off nice and slowly. Uh, ideally you want to use a core drill drill which you can hire or buy I've done a few of these with an SDS drill we're only going through um, one lot of bricks here so we're just going to use this SDS the cordless SDS just to show how good these things are yeah this is a little bit long but we're going to do it we're going to drill straight through we're going to keep this as straight as we can as we're going through we're going to go all the way through and then we're going to drill it from outside in um, Often you can, well, just drill it either way. You can drill it from the inside out, but we're, in this case, we're on a bungalow on the main street. Everyone can see what we're drilling. We don't have any bricks blowing off on the outside. Even though there will be a cowl to cover it and you often get a clean hole, in this case, we're able to go outside and drill from the, from the outside. So that's what we're gonna do in this case. Well, I'm gonna have a rough idea. I'm gonna have a rough me measurement of where it's coming outside. So we've got, what we're gonna do is that. 195 mil plus that wall. Do, 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 do. La, 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 la. So height from the finished floor in there. So like just above that damp proof is 235. Yeah, so we're gonna be nice and high up there, tucked out of the way. I'm hoping that the center of our hole is somewhere here. And we've got 190 mil plus the 30 mil wall. So 220, yeah. On this, hopefully we'll come out on that perp joint, up there somewhere. There's nothing that we need to avoid, so we'll just get on and drill it. Of course, we don't want to be too high, which I don't think that'd happen in there, that we hit anywhere near the soffits and faces. Drilling. Uh, health and safety, personal protective equipment, always. Eyes and ears, standing on something nice and sturdy. I'm just gonna start drilling this now. And start off slowly. I know that there's just a void behind this, so I'm going to try and keep the drill really straight all the way through. Oh yeah, overkill. Whoa. Yeah, we're starting again. <laughs> As always, nothing goes to plan. No need to panic. This is why we're here, to help you out. If anything like this happens, I don't know what I've hit. I think there's the bottom of the lintel. So it's gonna be a bit of a nuisance drilling this. Yeah, I can see the existing plaster bead there. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna drill it. It'll be drilling through a top half, it'll be drilling through a concrete lintel, and then it'll hit the steel at some point, and the bottom half will just be Plasterboard. So, yeah, anyway. That's the reason for the drill bending. It caught the bottom of the lintel and it just pushed it down. So I'm going to be real careful. Now I know what I'm up against. Let's go again. All right, change your heart. I was thinking of drilling through that lintel. Of course, it would have been okay if all this had been blocked up with blocks or bricks, but we can't just cut through this lintel. This will be all unsupported in yet, so we're going to just have to drill a little bit higher. That's the only thing for it. There's a lintel, it should be a you know, three inch lintel there, maybe a four. 
guessing three because it's not heavy, but it's only a small window. So I'm just going to drill a little bit higher up there. I've checked these cables, these are running down there. There is a feed for the electric hob, which is also running down here. We're making sure we've missed that. So yeah, all that measurements, forget about that. <laughs> We're going to have to drill a little bit higher up and this flexible ducting will stretch and go all the way through. Yeah, let's try again. Right, you might notice there's a slight fall on this drill bit, which is what we want when it falls into the outside, just in case any water ever gets into the hole that we're drilling. It won't come back into the house. So make sure you're not drilling, you're drilling straight, or, but definitely don't start drilling uphill from the inside out. I think we're on plan C now. Originally, we'd measured this out as where we wanted to drill ideal place. The core drill would have taken out the lintel, which we can't do, so we've got a little bit higher. When I was outside, I said there shouldn't be any issue with hitting the soffits or fascias, but drilling through there, I'm 100% that we're in inside the soffit and fascia. So we're dropping it back down and we're going to make sure we go just underneath this lintel. So the centre of our drill is there, and then we're just going to have to force the bend round for the six inch ducting onto the top of our extractor. So now we've got lots of holes. So now we've got the three holes that we wanted. Right. So now we've made a decision. Whoa. And this is where we're going to be starting off our drill. Okay. This is the boring bit. Uh, core drill, nice slow speed we want to go at. Uh, steady away, hammer action off. Uh, which is just drilling, there you go. Now the first bit is through plasterboard, so that's the reason why we were saying we'll drill it from the outside. But we'll, we'll start off here and see what happens. I'll get me goggles on. The main thing to watch for with this is you've got to go nice, you've got to go where the drill wants to go. You want to go nice and steady and you don't want to hold the drill up and down too much and you don't want this to catch inside. If this catches, the drill is going to spin. This will stay still and the drill will continue to spin. So you've got to be really steady for that. That's why a core drill is the ideal thing. It has a clutch which stops this from spinning around. These are pretty good at doing the same job. I'll keep a nice steady hold and we'll just go for it. Be all right. I think we can get our core drill bit into the centre of this hole. If you want to come and have a look, knock off any those mortar snops as they call them that are sticking out, just so we can get our core bill, the, the core drill guide in there to start the hole off in the brick. Yeah. So I can judge when I think it might be breaking through to the side. What I do is I keep in mind the distance between the core bit and the back of the, and the front of this plasterboard there or the wall that I'm drilling. And yeah, we're only through 80 mil nearly. So I know that we need to be through 300 almost. But the back of this will be 300 mil less this. I'll measure it now and then I can keep an eye on it. Uh, so when I've got about 140 mil, wow, I'll just keep an eye on it. <laughs> so, right, I'm thinking 
quietly to myself, which is no good for a video, is it? A bit of thinking out loud. I'm going to work out the height of this bracket now, which is, oh, that big. 315 mil from the bottom of the unit to the center of that hole there. So, 315. This is kindly marked with the center already on there, so I can line that up with our line. And I'll mark up 315 mil from there. 315. So, I think that's going to be where our bracket is going. Do, 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 do. Double check. It'll be 280 to the mark by bracket. I'm sure there are measurements in the instructions, but yeah, that's it. Now, we did just have, I had a mild panic because this wall has been uh, plasterboarded and not blocked up. I was just concerned about getting a decent fixing on this plasterboard for the weight of the hood. Um, but what we can do is I can reach in here and get a timber batten behind, screw that in place, and then screw our back bracket to that timber batten. So that is what we're gonna do now. So there we go. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, it's close. So there. And there. So I need to cut up a piece of timber and screw that in place. Just drill through there, just so I can get this exactly where we want it. Do, 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 do. Check our height above there. Yeah, we're all right there. And I'm just going to get some secondary fixing. And uh, want to make sure as well that this is level. It's such a small level, it's not really that reliable but for a long span. So I'll, I'll get that laser set up. What I'm using here is a, is a punch. I like to use these as opposed to the drill. It gives a nice seven mil hole for my wall plugs. That one there, I'm gonna have to drill this into solid wall. Do, 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 do. This one I put the plug in. It's amazing. Do, 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 do. Bum, 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 bum. So that'll rest there, and these will stop it from being pulled off at wall. Put you there. Bang, bang, bing, bong. Is it finished? Ah, see this one doesn't have the center marked. So I'm just gonna have a look, see how far down from the ceiling we need to be. So then grub screws line up. So, wow. That's a very exact. Six millimeters. Five millimeters. Five millimeter. So, let's mark the center of this bracket. Which is a very convenient 
216 mil. Eight. Five, six, seven. The top. And I'll mark them. Drill and plug them with my driller and plugger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 